saw this and wanted to make sure I uh, wish good luck to everybody I know in Texas. I do know a few people down there. The following report is made possible through the generous support of my patrons. Thank you. Great Rolling channel. power outages are in effect across the state of Texas. As the polar vortex has poured some of the coldest air ever into the central U.S. There are nearly 2 million Texans without power as of this morning. Texas Power Grid Operator, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERCOT, warned Sunday of an energy emergency and threatened rotating outages. By Monday morning, 1.25 local time, ERCOT began rotating outages to reduce demand on the electric system. Traffic lights and other infrastructure may also be temporarily without power. As of 7 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time, poweroutage.us. Hey there, it's mentioned in Oregon. Yeah, we're having quite a time up here. Uh, 300,000 and counting without power. Uh, almost everybody I have known has lost power, at least briefly. Uh, even here, where there's been no weather issues, we lost power for a few minutes the other night. And uh, internet's gone off and on a bunch of places. Several of my family members haven't had electricity for days in their apartments and houses. So it's uh, pretty serious. And yet, honestly, I gotta say... The weather event was uh, not that much more extreme up here than what's typical, actually. I mean, you know, some trees fell down, that's a thing, but we've we've had ice like this a lot, and it, it's melted in a lot of places, so I really don't know what's going on, honestly. Shows 1.834 million customers are without power across the state amid frigid temperatures. Over the last 24 hours, hundreds of daily records for cold temperatures were broken as Arctic air pushed all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. ERCOT officials said that outages are expected to last between 15 to 45 minutes. They say that blackouts are necessary to maintain the system's reliability. Power demand is expected to remain at record levels through Tuesday as record low temperatures will remain in the region through the week. This morning... Yeah, so the important thing here about all this that you're hearing, this is a great channel, you guys should check them out. They put out a lot of good information. But uh, there's three or four so main things, maybe five you could call it, that people need in order to live, basically. And the first one is, well, security, your immediate security. If you don't have your immediate security within yeah, three to 30 seconds, you know, you might die. Like if somebody's coming after you, you know, you always need to concern yourself with your immediate security, make sure you're safe, make sure nobody's trying to harm you and that you're not in danger of, you know, falling off a cliff in that second, you know, whatever. And the very next thing you move to is insulation. Before anything else, you want to make sure that you are warm because hypothermia will kill you in about three minutes minimum. That's acute hypothermia. You'll die in three minutes. Uh, 30 minutes, maybe. Uh, it could be three hours if it's like prolonged, you know, chronic hypothermia. Um, it could be 55 degrees out and you get wet and then you get chronic hypothermia and you die eventually in like a couple hours. So it's really not going to last long and you want to make sure you're insulated. This counts for your home at all times. You do not want to be freezing. So this could be clothes, could be your the insulation in your home. And, and, and fuel can help too, like if you're able to create warmth, you know. But uh, you want to hold that warmth in however you're creating it. Could be your own body heat. You want to hold that in. Very important. Because <laughs> it's only, you only got a couple hours max to figure that out, you know, pretty much. In, the, in bad conditions, particularly. And uh, on the other hand, the next one is hydration. You need water. You're going to die in like three days without water. Sometimes less. Maybe you can make it one more day than that. Whatever. But it's about three days. You're going to die. If you don't have water for three days, you're probably going to die. And if you were sick or, or fragile in the first place, you probably don't even quite have three days. You need water. So, or if you're doing a lot of labor, like you're working hard, yeah, you need water. Um, clean water. You cannot drink dirty water while you're 
living rough because now you're going to get dysentery or some other kind of illness and uh that's not good that'll that'll kill you so clean water very important dirty water does not count and uh in a situation like this where if you live in a city and the water turns off or anything like that um you're not going to be able to go drink out of a creek like those are all 100 percent polluted and poisoned you'll expire very quickly doing that so the ability to actually purify and clean water or or to locate and source and go find actual water that's very important and only way later do you get to the point where we're talking about food right and that's that's we call that mastication you know you got to eat and but you have 30 days you have three weeks 30 days or whatever to get that food you need you have some time you can technically generally a big person they can last definitely over th about 30 days you know if you're really fragile and thin maybe you won't make it quite that long but you still got some time so food you put that on the back burner you want to make sure you don't freeze death you want to make sure you got clean water then you can get food right um no point in having food if you have food and you eat it without water you're going to just expire more quickly and who cares what how much food you got if you freeze to death in the first day you know so or the sun as far as insulation you're protecting yourself from the heat too for that matter however after that it comes to medicine which is kind of tied in with the whole food thing um, because you just want to keep yourself healthy that could be like minerals vitamins um, herbs first aid you know what I mean you need these things and that can almost come into play at any time medicine is kind of one of those things you want the whole time hopefully because at any point you need it, it's going to be necessary, but you're going to need and you will need it. Give it three months. You're going to need some medicine. Everybody needs some medicine once every three months or something. You need some health, you know, um, that's important. And then the lastly is, uh, enjoyment and entertainment. You know, you need to, people don't last more than a couple months on their own without human contact, without some, some peace and love and, happiness, you know, and enjoyment, um, you need those things, but you don't need those for a couple months before you'll actually go insane. You know, some people can even make it a couple years before going completely insane. Um, they've even found people like shipwrecked people that killed themselves and said it was too many years. I couldn't take it anymore. And they, if they had just held out another year or two, they would have got found, you know, but it's like, you can only last so long without peace and enjoyment and love and whatnot. You know, people need, need that. So you want to keep track of those things in that order, on that timeline, essentially. But here's the important part. If you have a little bit of your independent fuel source, so whatever that is, something you can share with your neighbors, something you can use at your house, something you can hold on to, stock up on, you know, firewood, propane, um, solar even, I don't know. Uh, you probably want more than one, actually, truly. And a uh, oh, bioreactor compost heating. For heat in your house that's a that's a cool one very cheap and efficient you can use it all the time great backup uh if you can create some fuel for either heating or cooking or purifying water for that matter now fuel fuel is very important because you can use it for everything you can use it to keep warm use it for your water use it for your food use it for your medicine use it for your entertainment make yourself happy with a fire talk sit around talk around the fire you know what i mean it's like fuels for everybody, for all of these purposes. So for your neighbors, for you, for the whole community, you get what I'm saying? And when you get millions of people losing power, it becomes obvious, like, yes, we need just backup fuel sources, you know, redundant, extra backup fuel sources for everybody. Uh, and it's best if we all take it upon ourselves a little bit to handle our own needs as much as we can. And then uh, we can try to help our neighbors, you know, of course. Um, because they will be there for you, surely. And then, um, you know, just in case power grid goes down, we're not all complete sitting ducks, you know what I'm saying? Spot prices for wholesale power for delivery in Texas passed the grid's cap of $9,000 per megawatt hour. Wow. So it's like nine times the original price. So if you were spending 100 bucks on electricity usually, which I think it might be cheaper than that in... Texas even it's gonna be about nine hundred dollars now per month. So this month, if it's go you know down in Texas, anybody who has electricity is gonna be spending a lot of money on using it apparently.
trading at a staggering $9,009.40 per megawatt hour in the West Hub at 1 a.m. in Houston, a 3,466% increase from Friday. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas sets the limit to avoid runaway prices during extreme events. I'm sorry, it just said it was a 3,000 times increase, so I guess power and <laughs> power down there was even cheaper than I thought it was. Uh, that's incredible. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has issued a statewide disaster declaration describing the weather conditions as extremely dangerous. President Biden has declared a federal emergency. This allows the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA to coordinate disaster relief efforts and provide assistance, equipment, and resources to those affected by the storm. All right. Good luck, everybody that's in Texas. Good luck, everybody in Oregon and everywhere else is getting hit by this so hard. And uh, your garden will be able to come back. I wouldn't stress about it too much. There'll be lots more opportunities. Replanting. And uh, it's water. It'll be a good thing in the long run, but this is how it is, I guess. You know, you gotta gotta roll with the punches. It's how it is in nature. So anyway, thanks everybody. Have a good one.